Hello everyone, my name is Sophie and today I'm here to talk about my favorite female characters of all time. So, I just want to start this off by having a little chat and a little discussion about the term strong female character because most, if not all of these, would be categorized as strong female characters and I don't really like that term because like I don't know, it's really limiting. Like, a female character can only be a good character if she's strong. No, I prefer saying favorite well-written or complex female characters because then they feel like real people. For me, a, like, a woman doesn't have worth as a character just because she can kick ass or she can, like, destroy the government or something like that, you know? That's not my... That's not what I like about these girls right here and it's a term that makes me feel like kind of iffy because when like when people say my favorite strong female characters I'm like why are they strong are they just good female characters or do they can like kick ass are they just good female characters because they can kick ass and it, I'm not sure if I'm getting my point across I feel like I sound really all over the place and I'm not really saying what I think but yeah so <laughs> I just start this off First, I wanted to talk about a character from here that I deeply, deeply love, named Jasna Colin. But first, after, before talking about Jasna and Yasna, or whatever the fuck, I say Jasna, okay? Shut the fuck up, you Sanderson ass bitches. I say her name however I want. But first, I wanted to talk about all the female characters in the series, pretty much, because they're not... They have their strengths as people lies in different aspects. So it's not like all of them are good female characters because they can kick ass. Or all of them, it's because they're, like, intelligent. You know, they're, they're, their strength lies in different things. Like Shalon, she's really, really good at drawing. And uh, she's uh, she has an inner strength and kind of an inner... Conflict that makes her really really well in character and I I deeply appreciate her for that um, And there's Navani, Navani Colin, Jasna's mother, the the character I'm going to talk about And she's like the white, the wife, no, the mother of the king But she's also like an engineer and she's so fucking smart And she's like, she's so compassionate too and she's just an amazing character but the character in this series I want to talk about is Jasna Colin. She is the sister of the king and she's just fucking amazing. Like this entire society revolves around like this religion named the Voran religion. And like Jasna, she's an atheist and she rejects that religion. But she's also not only the sister of the king, but also a, like the most renowned scholar in all of their land because she's like so fucking smart and she's so fucking knowledgeable and she has just like this air of confidence like say whatever the fuck you want to me like i'm just i'm just above you but it, not in a no yeah in an arrogant way i feel like i'm gonna put this down because it's too heavy like some female characters they don't get to like assert how they know they're great and be arrogant because they know they're great when a lot of male characters, they have that opportunity to be like, yeah, I'm good at this, like, Quoth from Name of the Wind. Like, he knows he's good at stuff and he's arrogant because he's good at stuff. But, like, when female characters and women are aware of their qualities and they say stuff like that, they're deemed a bitch or, you know, stuff like that. But it's just like, Jasna, she knows her worth and she fucking asserts her opinions and positions. She doesn't let anybody while walk over her and I love her for it okay she's like my she's like who I want to be <sighs> she's amazing <clears throat> next character I want to talk about was another Sanderson characters and it is Vin from Miss Born by Brandon Sanderson Vin is just a really really good character but in a very different way than Jasna was Jasna whatever the fuck um because Vin has a character arc and she comes from a character trope, an archetype that I really, really love, which is Rex to Riches and like a street street thief. 
who doesn't trust anyone, learning to love and learning to have friends and learning to come unto herself. And I love that archetype. I love that trope. And Vin embodies that perfectly. Like she starts off as a street urchin, as a street thief. And she just like, she's part of this like thief crew, but she doesn't trust anybody. And she thinks they're going to backstab her any time. And she's like kind of right. But when she goes to this other guy's crew, Kelsier's crew, which is like the plot of the book, that she joins Kelsier's crew to overthrow the empire, the evil empire. When she joins them, she learns like, she develops such a beautiful relationship with Kelsier and she starts coming onto her own as a person and as, as a person, as an individual, as a fighter. And it's just so beautiful to, to read about. And I love it. The next character I want to talk about was one that is very different. Like, the setting she's in is really different than the other two. It is Evelyn Hugo from The Seven Husband Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is my favorite standalone of all time. I love Evelyn to death. And the reason I love her, this is a, like a historical fiction, contemporary, the mix of the two. And so... Evelyn is in a really different situation than the other two characters were. She's not, like, pressured by this master religion. The, or she's not a street thief. No, she's a woman from Cuba. But she changed her name, changed her hair. Who strives to become a Hollywood star. She wants to be an actress. She wants to be the actress, you know? And so she, just like Jasna does... Is, like, when... The story, I track a little and just say that um, Evelyn in this book is like 80 something years old and she hires this journalist Mo Monique to write her biography and then Evelyn tells the story of her life. So we get present day with 80 year old Evelyn and the story of Evelyn's life as she tells it. And like Evelyn now, her as an 80 year old woman, she's so, she's so confident. She's arrogant but in a way that i need women to be <laughs> that i want women to be like that she's aware that she's a badass motherfucking bitch that she is the fucking actress is also a very morally gray character she will do anything to get what she wants to get where she wants to go she uh, she has a beautiful heartbreaking life and i love this book so much and I love evelyn's character because i love her I think she's an amazingly written character. She's one of my favorites. And, like, I want to be as confident in herself as she is. And I love her. The next book I'm going to talk about is... Let me choose... Mm, the Bloodline series by Rochelle Mead. And this book follows... Ignore the cover. Ignore the fucking title. It's awful. They're awful. Okay? If I just turn this, it's better. But, um... This is about this girl named Sydney Sage, and she's been kind of raised in a very cultish, like, house, and, um, like, she works for the alchemist, which is, like, very cultish, very, like, they're in a whole organization that tells her what to think and what to, how to act like, and that really got to her head, and the series is her... And she likes, she's been, what's the name? She's been raised her whole life to, rate, to hate vampires. And in the beginning of the series, it's her grappling with the, those feelings of hating vampires. And of, like, what she's been raised with, with what she actually thinks. And it's a beautiful, beautiful story of this girl overcoming her abusive and oppressive and, uh, like, manipulative upbringing to becoming her own woman and her own person who makes her own decisions and i think it's beautiful she, ha she also has a beautiful romance and uh, i love this book so much i love sydney so much i love her arc like where she starts off to where she ends it's beautiful character development and like i know it's really cliche cliche with the this is a 2012 2013 series and yeah, if you if you can overcome the cliches that come with that why time and YA, I think this is a series is really really worth it. The next series I'm going to talk about is I'm deciding which one I'm going to end with. 
I'm gonna end with the other one. Okay, this is Never Night by Shay Kristoff. If this is not the first video you're seeing of me, then yeah. I talk about this a lot, like a whole fucking lot. I have an entire video, like a 14 minute video, on why this book is so polarizing and why people hate it, why people love it. And I'm really proud of that video. <laughs> and I think you should watch it, but Mia Corvair is a badass. She, I think she's a really complex character and I can't really talk about our, all her complexities right now. Because I, like, I've read, I've reread the series a whole lot, and I feel like I understand these, this character like no other. And, like, no other character, not no other person, but, like, no other character I've ever read about. And I think it's just, her arc is so beautiful, and her, uh, like, okay, okay. Let me just tell you a little bit what this is about and why she's amazing. Um, this, Mia got her entire familia killed family killed by these like three guys in this republic and she vows to like kill them back so she goes to an assassin school and trains so she can be able to avenge her family it's pretty much it the the basis of the story but there's also a lot more nuance and this world is really really grim dark it's really dark it's really gritty it's brutal and Mia has been raised in that world and to think that what she's doing is okay and just because that was done to her, it's okay for her to do it to another. And it's really, there's a, she has a companion shadow cat who eats her fear. And so we have really good and interesting discussions and, and like inner monologues about what her lack of fear is doing to her recklessness and to her person. And isn't fear like a major part of like your own, your own personhood and what is she without it and it's also beautiful like she she's thinking like Skeva took everything from from me like this guy she wants to kill Skeva took everything from me but for me to kill him am i not taking everything from a lot of other people too and i think it's really interesting discussion in Mia's growth i think it's beautiful it's amazing like you might think she's being a hypocrite in the beginning of the story but the other books really wrap that completely. Mia realizes what a hypocrite she's being, and it's beautiful, and I love it so much. It's my favorite series of all time. Okay, get on it. <laughs> and then the last book I'm going to talk about is, is another book that I've talked about quite a lot here on my channel, especially regarding the characters and the romance and all that, but it is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. And I wanted to talk about not one, but two, and maybe three characters here, but mainly two. Red Sister is about this little girl, Nona, who got saved of execution by this abbess of the convent. And she's taken to the convent to, to her safety and to train. And there's the reason she was hanged is like coming back to haunt her and people are trying to kill her. And it's about her and her relationship with the girls in the convent and her life at the convent. And it's, it's beautiful. I love the series. One of my favorite series of all time. I have tabbed all of the books in the trilogy. And, okay. Nona is one of the best written characters I've ever read about. And she is one of my favorite characters ever. And the reason why is because, like, she's... Uh, she's just so well written, so well realized. She's... Like, she's not a... a necessarily a good person in our world but in her circumstance in her world she's like she's just such a ray of sunshine in the midst of all that horribleness and the thing she values most is her friends and the, the, her found family so if you like that trope this book man it, it is it for you which i love that trope and it's she's just beautiful the way she deals with her fear with her feelings like she is a monster and her life at the convent is beautiful, it's amazing, her growth, because this book starts with her being like 10, 9 or 10, and the last book ends with her being 18. So yeah, it's a really, it's really good, and it's really interesting and beautiful to see her grow up and become that badass motherfucking woman, because like, ah man, this book is just so amazing. And the other character I want to talk about is Abbas Glass, the woman who took Nona from her your execution to the convent she is the abbess of the convent abbess apis i have no idea how to talk how to say that word i only read it and i'm not and i'm brazilian so 
that helps. But Eva's Glass, she's such she's just such an interesting character. She's in her mid fifties or mid sixties, I would guess, and she's like she she is technically past her prime, as we say with like characters of like this kind of story of adult high fantasy. But like she's bitch. The woman is just so fucking smart. Like she her main uh, like. Not purpose. Her main thing in the series is how she can see so far ahead. And with one word or with one action, she can like put the pieces of the domino rolling and get to the action she wants years later. And it's just so interesting to see her manipulating people and her manipulating the pieces on the board to get to what she wants. And even like, and it's so beautiful. Like even before Nona like really knows, she's being manipulated by Glass too. But Glass is not just a manipulator, a bad, a bad person. No, she, she just knows what she wants and what she needs, and she does everything to get it. And it's for the good of the convent. So she's a really interesting character. I love her so much, and yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this book, especially for the characters, because Nona and Abyss Glass are not the only two characters that are amazing here. Pretty much all of them are Sister Kettle. Arabella Jotsis, like all of them, Zol, all of them are amazing and I really highly, highly recommend this series. So yeah, that was it, I guess. These are my favorite female characters for their complexity, for their actions, for their, uh, for their everything. I love them for how they're written, for how they act, for how they are, how they feel. And yeah, my name is Sophia and I'll see you next time. Bye.